Uh, Twitter, another popular social networking tool, over 100 million viewers, users, I should say. This was really in the news during the uh, Iranian presidential campaign and the uprisings that they had on the streets of Tehran. It was uh, disclosed about halfway through that whole episode that intelligence services on both sides of the ocean were using Twitter to try to get their particular version of the truth to the masses. Um, in fact, the United States government asked Twitter to delay a scheduled maintenance shutdown the weekend of the presidential election in Iran. This request came from the U.S. Department of State. Interesting. Your private tweets, by the way, not exactly private. We've not yet succeeded in transmitting that message to our daughter. <laughs> But just as with anything else you do on the internet, you might as well assume that whatever you tweet, post, like, dislike, you might as well post it to your next resume. Um, another interesting technology, and I think one that may have even more potential uh, to provide grist for the national security state mill, is uh, this company, Second Life. Are, are you familiar with this, uh, this? You can't even call it a game. It's not really a game. Second Life is, um, with 18 million registered users, is uh, kind of small potatoes compared to what uh, you know, Facebook has put together. But it's really interesting in that Second Life is essentially a user-created 3D virtual world. This uh, slide depicts a uh, kind of a virtual meeting that's taking place where the users create their own avatars and can interact in real time with one another. It kind of must have been an interesting business meeting because you see this fellow here chose to represent himself as the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> but again, with Second Life, there is no goal. You get into this world, you create an avatar the way you want to represent yourself to the rest of the users in that world. You build, buy real estate, build structures, and there are large corporations that are now constructing virtual offices inside. Welcome to Seltra, your fully equipped secure center for virtual corporate meetings and events. At Seltra, we use Second Life technology to provide a serious alternative to the traditional face-to-face -face and video conferencing events. An alternative that is environmentally friendly, an alternative that is available to use at any time in your own premises with no extra equipment or setup costs and an alternative that will allow you to make significant savings for each and every event you hold. Getting started is really easy. Our comprehensive service supports you from your very first steps and we guarantee to have you up and running in just 10 minutes and our support is there for you to even the most advanced level. Participants put their own personal identity together from a simple, easy to use menu. Then, using interactive demonstrations and trials, they will quickly and easily develop the necessary skills for navigation, presentations, meetings and communications. Planning on hosting a meeting or event? Before you finalise those plans, why not consider the benefits of letting Seltra host it for you? There really are no limits to what you can do. With Seltra staff on hand at all times, cutting edge technology gives you the power to share ideas, stream live internet medias, keep notes, use interactive content, deliver presentations and break out into private areas for role play and discussion. Consider the possibility of abandoning those travel plans, cancelling that expensive venue, scrapping those hotel costs, taking back those days spent away from the office and being environmentally responsible without the high cost of video conferencing. Think about the tangible savings, time, money and carbon. Then imagine how impressed your clients and colleagues will be with your innovative use of technology. All of this really is possible using our service. If you would like to find out more about our service and how Seltra can help your business to save money and carbon while increasing productivity, please contact us at sales at seltra.org. I had to laugh though when they talked about breaking out into private sessions for role play, as if this whole thing isn't role play. Kool-Aid man. <laughs> but this is the direction the technology is going, and especially if they can sell it to 
be environmentally concerned that this saves carbon. <laughs> we can all put ourselves into the matrix and just interact virtually this way. Uh, so watch for this to become a, a bigger player in the corporate world, not just for people who want to interact with one another in a, in a virtual reality. Um, and you can really lose yourself in this game, by the way, because it is, when I say happening in real time, unlike Farmville, where you plant a crop and you get a whole field full of pumpkins in a couple of hours, this is real time, you know, so I mean, to get anything productive done, there is a one-to-one -one correlation in terms of the amount of time you put in. You can spend days inside there. And it, frankly, it kind of creeps me out. And again, it's all happening through the internet with companies that may provide the data to, that, to the authorities. Uh, other social networks out there that uh, trade information back and forth, there's a company called Foursquare that is essentially like a, uh, well, it's like a Zynga role-playing game. You actually go out and travel about, and as you go to various locations, you check in and you get points and rewards for checking in and telling people where you are at any given moment. Yeah, so of course your movements are being recorded and tracked, but you get points. You get points. Uh, Yelp, which is like Facebook meets GPS meets Consumer Reports. You go around and tell people what you think of the newest restaurant you just tried. And uh, again, it's sending not just your location data, but networks of your friends and associates to somebody up there in the cloud who then again may be required at some point to provide that information to the authorities. Uh, RFID technology we probably have heard an awful lot about, radio frequency identification. We get tags that are being used for all kinds of things now. Shipping containers, identifying uh, material in boxes very quickly as they move from place to place. Uh, we talked, uh, and you probably have read about uh, implantable RFID chips, Digital Angel, VeraChip. Sam is chipped, isn't he? Sam Dachshund? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our Dachshund has a chip. But hey, if you want, really want your child to be safe, why not have your child chipped? Why don't you, if you've got medical, special medical requirements or, or things that uh, emergency responders might need to know, why don't you take a chip as well? And of course, that information digitized, recorded someplace, um, and it's not stopping there. Just read a, a press release a couple of weeks ago about a company called Proteus, which is proposing ingestible chips. Yes, ingestible chips. You take a certain medication that you are required uh, to uh, take for uh, maintaining your mood or your cholesterol level or what have you. The chip activated by your stomach juices sends a little signal to a wearable receiver. And if the medicine level goes below a certain point, it can automatically notify your doctor or the hospital or the authorities, perhaps. Uh, now again, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of a really high-tech version of that, uh, what is the I fall and I can't get up thing? So, because it's automatic, which makes it better. Um, other means of being tracked uh, via your movements, of course, again, as I said, we sort of take for granted anymore, thanks to uh, CSI, law and order, you know, we've, we've sort of become accustomed to police procedure, at least the basics of it. You use a credit card anywhere, the authorities can find you pretty quickly. Um, and like I said, it uh, has been so ingrained in us anymore that uh, we sort of take it as suspicious if somebody wants to go in and pay cash for an item that costs more than a couple of bucks. And of course, uh, those purchases that you've made can be tracked and used for profiling. He's buying an awful lot of prophecy books. <laughs> he must be one of them. So why do we submit to all of this? Why are we feeding all of this information into this national security state? Well, convenience. What's in your wallet? Nobody wants to be the person holding up the line at the checkout counter searching for exact change. And of course, you can get through the toll road, the toll booth on the toll road a lot faster if you've got a, a speed pass or a, an RFID tag on your license plate. It's convenient. Internet commerce, like buying tickets to this particular conference, <laughs> is facilitated by using that little piece of plastic, is it not?